Welcome to Akshara Foundation's video on standard units of measurement for length, weight and volume. The measuring tape, weighing balance and cubes and rods from the base 10 blocks in the math kit designed by Akshara Foundation can be used to introduce these concepts. Ask a few students to measure the height of the window using their hand span. When they compare the readings, they will see that the measurements vary. A standard unit of measurement can overcome these variations. Ask students to observe the measuring tape in the math kit. Look at the markings on the tape. There are long lines at regular intervals. The distance between two lines is a centimeter. Each centimeter is further divided into 10 equal parts called millimeters. 10 millimeters make 1 centimeter. Centimeter is the standard unit of measurement. 100 centimeters make a meter. This measuring tape is 150 centimeters long. The reverse side of this tape is marked in inches. The plastic or wooden scale which students use is either 15 centimeters long or 30 centimeters long. Students must learn the notation used to write millimeters, centimeters and meters. As an activity, let students measure the length of a book, a pencil, a geometry box and the blackboard using the tape. Now, ask them to write down the measurements and list them in the ascending order of length. To convert meters into centimeters, multiply the number of meters by 100. Thus, 3 meters is 3 into 100, which is 300 centimeters. Similarly, to convert centimeters to millimeters, multiply the number of centimeters by 10. For example, 4 centimeters is 4 into 10 millimeters, which is 40 millimeters. Let students do a few exercises to master conversion of units. Why do we need to measure length? Students have just found out that the window is 100 centimeters or 1 meter in height. Another window is 150 centimeters or 1 meter and 50 centimeters in height. This can also be written as 1.5 meters. If curtains are to be stitched for both windows, then how much material will be required? Here, students must add the two measurements and they will get the answer as 2.5 meters. A quick visit to a cloth shop will show how the shopkeeper uses a metal meter scale to measure cloth. How do we measure distance between two places? The unit of measuring distance is called a kilometer. Thousand meters is one kilometer. Consider a bus route in a city. The distance travelled between the first bus stop and the second bus stop is 1000 meters, which is 1 kilometer. The distance between the second bus stop and the third bus stop is 1500 meters, which can also be written as 1.5 kilometers. We can also say 1.5 kilometers, since 500 is half of 1000. So the distance of the third bus stop from the starting point is 2.5 kilometers. Raju lives 3.5 kilometers away from the train station. To reach the station, he first travels by bus for 2.5 kilometers. Then, he has to walk the rest of the way. What is the distance that Raju has to walk? By subtracting 2.5 kilometers from 3.5 kilometers, we find that Raju has to walk 1 kilometer. A few sample problems are given to students here so that they can gain confidence to deal with the units of measurement for length. How is the weight of an object measured? By lifting a pencil or pencil box in one's hand, we can only estimate the heaviness or weight of the object. To measure the exact weight, we need to weigh the object using a weighing machine or balance and standard units of weight. The standard unit for weight is called kilogram. One kilogram is equal to thousand grams. Let students look at the weighing balance 
from Akshara's math kit. The two containers are placed on either side. Note how the central pointer is adjusted. It is balanced at the midpoint. The base 10 blocks in the math kit has cubes and rods which are used for the purpose of understanding this concept. Each yellow cube weighs 1 gram and each blue rod weighs 10 grams. Please note that only cubes and rods from the base 10 set are designed for weighing. Let students now find the weight of the two objects. Place the pencil box in the container on the left. A student can now start placing one blue rod at a time into the container on the right. With a few rounds of practice, students will know how to balance the pencil box against the weights. When both containers are balanced, the pointer is exactly at the center. Count the rods and cubes. We have here 8 rods and 4 cubes, which is 80 grams plus 4 grams, which is equal to 84 grams. Note this in your notebook. Now, ask students to weigh the pencil. It weighs 6 grams. What is the total weight of both objects put together? 84 grams plus 6 grams is equal to 90 grams. The total weight thus is 90 grams. Let students try another problem. Take a packet of groundnuts. Weigh it and note the answer. It is 375 grams. If one student takes some of the groundnuts, can we calculate how many grams he took? Weigh the remaining groundnuts and note the answer. It is 200 grams. To find the weight of the groundnuts taken, subtract 200 grams from 375 grams to get the answer which is 175 grams. Heavier objects such as sugar or fruits or vegetables, groceries, cement and so on are sold in kilograms. 1000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram. To convert kilograms into grams, multiply the number of kilograms by 1000. Shopkeepers have bigger scales with standard metal weights. Tony helps his mother carry home 500 grams of onions, 1 kilogram of potatoes, 250 grams of tomatoes and 2 kilogram and 500 grams of watermelon. What is the total weight of all the items bought? Mamta says that her school bag weighs 2,250 grams. Saida says that her bag is heavier and weighs 2 kg and 250 grams. Whose bag is heavier? 2,250 grams when converted into kilograms is written as 2 kg and 250 grams. Thus, both weigh the same. Both weigh 2 kg, 250 grams. Let students now work out some more problems of conversion from grams to kilograms and then from kilograms to grams for better practice. Let students make a list of the different kinds of weighing machines including the electronic weighing scales which are used in the market. How do we measure liquids such as water, milk, juice or oil? We need containers to measure liquids. Liquids are measured by volume and the standard unit for measuring volume is a litre. 1000 millilitres makes 1 litre. To convert litres to millilitres, multiply by 1000. Students may be familiar with some products such as cooking oil and milk which are sold in packets of 1 litre or half a litre. Ask Ravi and Tony to bring some water. Each one brings water in a container of a different size. To find out who has bought more water, we need to measure the volume of water brought by both of them. Show students the two volume containers from the math kit. Standard units from 100 milliliters up to 1000 milliliters are marked on one side. Ask Ravi to pour the water he has brought into one volume measure. Now, ask Tony to pour water he has brought into the other volume measure. 
when the containers are placed side by side, we can clearly read how much water each has brought and compare. To find the difference, all we have to do is subtract the smaller quantity from the larger quantity. Let students measure different liquids and gain confidence in finding the volume of liquids.